Good afternoon, fellow Toastmaster. My name is Toastmaster Shivani. Today we have gathered here to understand, to learn more about the role and responsibilities of the area directors. So we all know that uh, the area director has a major role to play. They serve as a direct liaison between the district and the club. Before going into the question answer uh, session, first of all, I would like to congratulate all the women uh, holding a highest position in the area, the uh, area directors. So welcome you all. So in today's panel, we have uh, Toastmaster or rather A.D. Ria, who is area director of N1. We have A.D., area director Gunjan Banarasi from area N2. We have A.D. Sapna Acharya from uh, area N3. And we have Sakshi, A.D. Sakshi, from area director from the N4. I welcome you all. Uh, I will request everyone to keep your video on all the time. So let's start. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to start with uh, Ria. Uh, you all are serving as a district officers and have been associated with that fraternity for quite a time now. My question is what prior experience one should have and in what roles to serve as a district officer? The experience. What I would say is I personally do not have an experience on being an extended team, but I had an experience on leading some teams at a ground level. So I had experience of leading a team at college. I had experience of conducting my HPL and leading a team at Toastmasters and doing certain other activities. So it's not like that you need to have uh, the experience when you become an area director. It's like when you know that you want to learn something. We say it was a platform to learn. So if you already know everything, that's what's here to learn and what's the main idea of taking this leadership position then. If you're not adding something or you're not adding a value to your role or to yourself itself. Having a bit of prior knowledge is important. A bit of prior experience is important because you are going to lead us. You are going to have a position. But it right. does not mean that you have to be very, very experienced. And then you, yeah. to, you can take a step forward. Yes, that's what I can see from you and Sakshi. Uh, Sakshi is coming from the college community, right? Uh, so, so what do you think? What was the positive point that made you selected for uh, this position? I would say, Shivani, uh, one quality that we would all agree to become any leader, be it a club leader, be it le leader at in Toastmaster or outside Toastmaster is determination and consistency. Because if if we don't have, if we are not determined to serve the people as Toastmasters is all about servant leadership, then we cannot carry it at, at any point of time. Right. And, you know, uh, I would say it's a boon being a student because what people are learning at the age of 30, 40, uh, I got this experience uh, starting exactly at the age of 18. Right. So, you know, that way, I would say being a college student, uh, the best thing is that I am determined to become a better version of myself at the age of 18. And this platform is providing me to do that. So, yes, that's the good part about that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and at the very young age, you have become an AD. That's, uh, I would say, a cherry on the top. Okay. So, um, my next question will be with uh, Sapna, AD Sapna. The, clearly, as a leader, one of the obstacles you all must have faced would be the time management. Right. So, I would like to know. On an average, how much time do you devote to the Toastmasters and then to your personal and professional life? Okay. So thank you, Shivani, for uh, asking me this question. And hello, my co-ADs, because I think this is the wonderful opportunity we all are meeting together. And uh, so for answering your question, 
i always i mean people always ask me that you are a uh, you know you are a mother you are you are an it professional and you are also serving as a president of your club and also the area director of n3 so you are doing yeah. lot of things so how you are managing it and i, I always tell them one thing that if you love to do something that you, then you automatically create time for that of you course, maybe yes. start you know uh, waking up early and then you have that in mind that i have to do that so this is one thing which i always say because i love to do you know to take participation in toastmasters and to interact with people so this thing lead me to do a lot of work now if you ask me that how much time i devote uh, in toastmaster and in my personal life and in my professional life so yes saturday sunday we have to you know uh, interact with my coeds and then we find out what work we have so we do according to so saturday sunday yes we at least give 30 minutes to one hour to that but uh, uh, to those masters and uh, my personal life also like evening i go with my uh, family to have some you know to for to have some food or maybe we are meeting with our loved ones so i think i'm managing it pretty well because i'm devoting time equal time to all these uh, things so yes it's great to hear that that you are giving you are balancing both the professional and your personal life and i really agree that yes passion is required if there is a passion time doesn't matter so thank you so much uh, sapna we will come back to you again and now coming to gunjan ad gunjan so it's a uh, performing the role of an uh, ad is a daunting task right and i'm sure our viewers although there are no viewers but since this will go online or uh, it will be aired on different channels so i'm sure our viewers who wish to take this role in future would like to know about the difficulties and the challenges you faced during the past 6 months and how you have prepared for the upcoming 6 month so almost i think 6 months have passed right after taking mm-hmm. up the charges yeah yes so first of all thank you to master shivani for asking me this question and uh, i would say that uh, each and every one has their own journey has their own journey when they become a leader they, they become a district leader they carry that responsibility on their shoulders so uh, challenges are there in every situation it's not like you become a district officer maybe an area director maybe a division director and everything is a piece of cake there are challenges because you're working with people you're working with different people of different walks of life exactly firstly you must have that maturity that little maturity is needed to understand that not everybody comes from the same background as you are coming not everybody is coming from the same perspective by which you are coming you right. are serving uh, to your division to your district with a certain perspective so it's not necessary that everybody would have that same thought in their mind you need to understand that what's their purpose behind coming here and exactly. that's only when you can cater their needs very nicely and there would be less of hassle while you are managing and coming ahead <clears throat> in your leadership and bringing others in front so understanding is very important i would say and a little maturity of understanding people is what we need and next as toastmaster sakshi said that consistency is what you need that that comes second and thirdly i would say if challenges comes to your way there will be a little frustration i won't i won't be sugar coating everything over here there will be a little frustration there will be a little irritation but this ad this leadership uh, ad term or division director you can say this this leadership teaches you to be patient to handle things with patience and uh, as the past leader has also said me one of the ads in my past uh, toastmaster yash has said me this and toastmaster dipalika also says always says this that don't res- uh, don't react always respond so i have like wo patthar ki lakir hoti hai na wo aise chhap gayi hai dimag pe okay ho raha hai theek hai don't react respond calm down take a deep breath if any challenges comes to you we try to understand situation 
don't react and just try to find that what went wrong how could what will be a possible solution and then go for it so yes this is a major learning which i uh, have learned in past 6 months it had made me more patient as a person as well and i am i had learned to uh, understand the perspective of the person who is in front of me if he or she is saying something understanding the perspective right yeah. yes i totally agree with you patience is required and that's what you said is instead of reacting respond you know we have to we are holding a very big position we can't go reacting to every situation that will aggravate the situation right so that is most important and we learn it from that that's a, a very good to hear from you uh, gunjan and i would uh, continue with riya and sakshi also with the same question because you two are young at least sapna and gunjan they are bit experienced they have been in the toast master for such a long time and holding a big positions so riya and uh, sakshi so uh, what are the challenges that you face in your uh, um, area i would go with uh, riya first all right so actually it was never a challenge for me uh, after i became my ad that you are young how will you do it this was definitely a question for my ad interview but my team always supported me and because of my team that i never faced the challenge See, you are small i don't want to hear listen to you or you are young you don't know anything so this never came up they always supported me all right you have an idea let's execute the idea let's see then what happens later on. so this was one of the positive points that i always had the support of my team and fortunately never it did happen that i i faced a lot many setbacks when it comes to communicating with people who are under me because i feel i am communicating with any other person who is under at the same age as me so um and learning how to communicate with my friends and then learning how to communicate uh, with the people who are elder to me right in a formal way it was a bit difficult but slowly i am incorporating it thank you so much riya now sakshi your take thank you shivani uh, well you can always say that uh, you know this question everybody asks it, what are your challenges as a as a 19 year old or 20 and i and riya have answered it pretty much well and i'll keep it to that particular point so as you all know i've done my 3 months internship last year when i was an interim ad right so that was this moment when uh, our past division director uh, toastmaster mayuri was all around and i was a scared piece of Well, you know, I was a child who was scared. Okay, what next? I don't know. And the first first thing was self doubt. Am I? Can I do it? Because uh, in my area, I had everyone older than me, right? And I've never lead. I I never led a team with people older than me. I I've been my school captain when I was in class twelve. Everybody is younger than me. When I was in college, I was leading people of my age. Uh, all the communities. But when I became an AD, first thing yes. was, uh, you know, self doubt. Am I? Yeah. Will why would they want to listen to me? And second was credibility, because, uh, you know, you they offer you handbooks, uh, executive committee handbooks, and you know, ADs are uh, district leaders handbook. When you read them, you feel oh. When you become an AD, it's like. Oh, thank you, thank you. I became an AD. But when you become an AD and then you read that book, when you sit in that training program, you realize this is not a this is not a uh, you know it's not a small deal. It's a big deal. Take it seriously. You have to learn things and you have to offer uh, you know learnings to others as well. It does not stop with you learning things and executing plans, but you also have to inspire people to come next year and take your place. so the biggest thing uh, as riya said is the team uh, kudos to division n division council as well as the managers as well as the past leaders cheers to them that we always had support any idea okay uh, calculate the pros and cons will i be suitable for it if not riya please help me out sapna help me out i in the four of us i would say 
uh, I'll rate six out of ten to me on remembering rules and ten out of ten to all these three ladies on rules. <laughs> If, That's right. Exactly. So in last six months, they have helped me to believe myself that yes, I can make leaders. I am a credible person. I can make people feel yes, uh, I am your leader. We need to talk it out and we can do this. So this is my you know biggest fear that I had. that i i'm not a leader right now i'm just a student so in last six months i started believing yes if if riya can do it i can also right. do it and we're doing right. it together <laughs> yes that's so great uh, yes this is again i would say that coordination is very important for uh, own development without that uh, one cannot grow neither a person nor the club as well so coordination between uh, not only between the uh, area directors of the four areas in the nagpur or division n or uh, the but the coordination between different uh, uh, the people holding different higher position at a higher level also coordination between them is very important that helps us to grow more as an individual as well as in the club also okay let's move ahead with that now uh, every role that you take up in the toastmaster or we take it in the toastmaster we set a uh, certain goals personal goals that is to be achieved at the end of the term now as a leader you all have to constantly motivate promote and fulfill the goals of your areas clubs and the members so i would like to know how you strike a balance between your personal goals and the responsibility leadership responsibilities i think this is very important to motivate promote and um, the goals of the area clubs and members to motivate the member this is a very herculean task i think you would also uh, agree with that so how uh, you strike a balance between your uh, the personal goals and the leadership re- responsibilities at uh, sapna can i yeah I think this is a very nice question, uh, Toastmaster Shivani, which you have asked. Because we even we uh, when we attended our district official officers training program, they asked us that as a area director, you are also responsible uh, to motivate your clubs to achieve their goals, and as well as at the same time, as a leader, you must have your own goals too, uh, which you can achieve after your term. so when i started my area directors journey i had two things in my mind first is to be empathetic and second thing is i had to create future leaders so this thing i always had as a president also i thought yes because my uh, mentors my uh, senior uh, toastmasters they always you know show, has shown faith on me that yes you can do it before that i was not having that realization that i have that much potential to do i even didn't think that i can be a president of a club so that confidence they have given me uh, after believing in me and giving me opportunities also so this is what like my own goals was when i started my red directors journey is to create future leaders that i'm going to trust them i'm going to tell them that yes you can do it so that they can have realization that they they are having that potential and third thing is uh also to tell them how empathy is very important you know when uh, as a leader when you are having club members in your team when you have to when you're talking to your excom officers even as a it uh, professional if you are leading a team of few associates so it is important that you listen to them first as uh, gunjan and uh, sakshi they also mentioned that you do not react you should respond so let's he- listen to them first and then uh, show them empathy uh, you should put yourself uh, on their position and then you should respond so this is what i i mean my personal goals and how my members can also achieve their goals so this thing really helped me a lot so yes okay. thank you shivani thank you sapna uh, now uh, gunjan i would like to ask you 
then there are lots of procedure and protocols okay communicated from the district in case you don't agree with the certain decisions or the club uh, doesn't respond positively to it how do you handle such a situation of conflicts that's a very good question to master shivani because such conflict arises quite a few times when there are uh, community clubs college clubs as well as corporate clubs everybody has their own uh, culture club culture is different of every club right and when such thing happens that there is there arises certain conflict so i believe that it's my take on this that a, club a is saying apple juice is right club b is saying orange juice is right so what i will do take a little bit of apple juice take a little bit of orange juice make a cocktail yes. and serve it to them <laughs> yeah because i know <clears throat> that apple is also necessary orange is also necessary for their growth and development i can't grow with only apple or i can grow with only orange juice so let's make a cocktail for them that they will also enjoy and ultimately the goal is achieved of uh, going to the right path which will help the clubs to grow eventually and that's all we want as a district leader that the club should grow the members should grow they should come up so let's serve them a cocktail that's my take on it that's a very good we uh, by doing this you don't hurt anyone right yeah right you uh, take ideas from one group and take ideas from one group and put it correct. in front of everyone and correct. both the team both the clubs are happy with that correct i agree with you all and uh, i think we should all follow that too to maintain a balance and harmony in the club thank you so much gunjan thank now you. let's go to uh, sakshi uh, so i would like to know what procedure and processes you have put in place in your respective areas any be best practices or initiative you would like to share right uh, best practices so what okay i yes so the one thing that i've been trying to do is actually mingling with the uh, excoms and which results into uh, every month's area council meeting at times only two clubs show up at times only one person from every every club shows up but at least uh, you know they want to connect to each other right now right. i've been trying to make groups for example if x club needs help so rather than doing it myself i make the y club do it or if two clubs are struggling with role play so i'll suggest ki okay go with a joint meeting not just with right. my area but i i we i guess this is an habit we don't see as different areas we see our division as a division right exactly yes, mm. right so yes that's what we try to do some days back i and riya had a call okay my club is struggling your club is struggling let's have this this thing so that way i am trying to create a cross culture a cross club culture like you know where people are actually opening up because uh, at at one point i find people are very Uh, uh, hesitant about talking to each other outside mm. toastmasters some are uh, you know some are very exuberant excited some people are like me who <clears throat> just love networking and talking to people but there is this large audience who have come to learn because they are introvert or they are hesitant so this has been my initiative that people talk to each other not not just to me they have to open up to me of course and their area director so i i try making them comfortable but i want them to open up with each other more therefore right. i have a regular monthly acm has been something that i have been doing as my initiative and it will not lead to any kind of big success but the the thing is i want them when i go if i am not available for them at least somebody is and that's what that's what my initiative has been that's a good idea you know meeting and talking to the people then only they will open up and the second thing is this one uh, joint club meeting because everyone is facing our club is also facing the same problem the role players are not available mm -hmm. because everybody is busy with their professional life and all that so uh, this uh, initiatives has also been taken by our clubs and i hope the other clubs are also going for it yes. okay thank you sakshi now let's moving to riya so one of the most important uh, best quality i would say is the delegation uh, however we know at times uh, the members are demotivated 
no willing or responding and the deadline is approaching so provided these situations were you able to delegate the task if yes kindly share with us so i i call myself radioactive why radioactive is i get into things okay <laughs> so delegation is actually not my strong point but when it comes to clubs then i cannot go and do an activity in a club i have to motivate the uh, the excom itself to conduct an activity in it so um what i do is i tell them about all the district awards that they might be having next i try to tell them that the qualities that they might be inhibiting from the challenges that they are facing right now mm-hmm. if they want a break go ahead take a break i am not going to push a lot many deadlines on you the same i do understand that you have other priorities yeah i can help you in this but you are the ones who are going to you are the one who have to do this task i i cannot exactly mm-hmm. so trying to create a win win situation i like i gain this but you also gain this like this is very important yes so this is how i try to motivate and delegate but yeah i do understand it delegation is not one of my strong points but i am trying to do it. okay so um, sapna i can you share your views regarding this how you delegate i think i'm pretty much agree with riya because uh, i mean whatever she said we should guide our uh, excom team and our club that what are your goals and uh, so that you they can get motivated and one thing i would like to add what what riya said that we can also give them some you know uh, the past achievements which their club had so mm-hmm. this thing really motivate them motivate, okay, our right. club yeah. our club did very well in the last term and we have that potential to do that in this term as well so this thing really motivate the excom team and me as a id is like uh, i'm very lucky and <laughs> the proud area director i must say because my clubs are uh, you know they they always connect with me and uh, they 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 all are ready to do all the work they are very enthusiastic and uh, they even come and tell us me that okay we want to do this uh, engage activity we want to you know do these joint clubs meeting in our area so this is uh, pretty well i i'm having very good club members i must say <laughs> so <laughs> this is one thing and uh, yes i think i am really agree with riya just to add one thing that we can also tell them these are the your past achievements and you can achieve that so just give them realization of their goals and a little direction that in this way you can achieve it then right will really work that will really work yes i agree with that too because yes one needs to talk about their achievements in a club achievements or member achievement that will motivate the upcoming the leaders or upcoming members thank you sapna let's uh, move ahead uh, this is open to uh, all of you i'm not uh, asking anyone in particular because this is related to fiscal responsibilities then uh, all the area director have this fiscal responsibility to be taken care of in the terms of event planning recognitions and achievement then budgeting is also there so can you throw some light what kind of financial knowledge or experience should one have for the role of area director so this is i think a very big uh, brainstorming kind of uh, role that you need to play right or i should say the responsibility the planning then recognitions then budgeting the budgeting is the most trickiest part to deal with the finance so what's your man uh, i mean to say uh, what uh, prior knowledge or experience do you need to handle such thing so oh, hi shivani Hi. Then and this uh, Ria and Sapran Gunjan comes up with a very valid answer. I I will give you a small insider. Mm. See, uh, 
we have our own legacy that we have been following, right? So last year also, what I saw is we divided, uh, we get some, uh, you know, uh, some amount of amounts from the district end, and some. Uh, so we need to make sure that every area gets equal contribution, right? And you should know your, uh, you should know how to manage your own expenses. First point. Yeah. If, if you're managing your own expenses, be it Sapna who's a working lady to be, uh, and coming down to me and Ria who are managing our student expenses. One should know how to utilize it and how to be wise with it. And then only, and of course, it's, as I said, it's never uh, N1, N2, N3, N4, it's division N. Right. So when we do it, we have to be that wise that nobody should feel that we have left someone out or some area has got less contribution. You have to be wise and you have to be, uh, you know, you have to equally distribute things. So first knowledge. Second is, uh, uh, you know, giving weightage to different uh, awards that we come up with. We have Golden Eagle. We have, uh, we have one more award that is the, help me out, Golden Feather. Feather. And then we had uh, uh, some souvenirs for the managers and focals and everything. So you should know what keeps more weighted. We had one outstanding Toastmaster achiever also. That was, yeah, right, right. So one should know uh, that how much importance one award has. And then you distribute that amount you have in particular budget. So budgeting is something that is not just our responsibility. Hopefully our division director guides us through it and then we do it. So that's the proper way. But yes, uh, you should actually know the importance of budgeting. If you know, we have a budget of 5,000 rupees and 4,000 is given only for the golden feathers, then what about the others, right? So that's the basic knowledge that one needs. It, okay. it hasn't had to be very big or you don't have to be a CA to do that. That would be my take. <laughs> yeah. To add on what Sakhi was saying, just do restrict yourself to budget. Just think about it in all the things. Let's have all the resources. You have your time, you have finance, you have human resource. Now, all these things are limited, not only our budget. All right. the resources that we somehow manage these resources, right? We divide people, we group them. And then uh, we say, you are good at this, then you do this. Right. And if you want to learn this, then th these are the people who can help you learn this. Exactly. Right. So this is how you divide resources. That's how budget is also a resource. You divide these resources, as Sakshi said. Who is good in the, you know, mathematics, I would say finance or accounting, that uh, the person should be given for the budgeting. Look into that matter, right? This is how we can delegate, right? Well, I agree that a part of de delegation, but let's think about it. Um, in a very different scenario, this if you if you're not aware how to do um, how to manage your own funds, then you're uh, how will you um, manage the funds that are given to you by the district? Mm -hmm. Because this money uh, is actually belong to those masses international. Yeah, and the members have paid for it. They're hard earned money, so this money has a lot of value. So exactly. you have to, mm. so whenever you take a decision, you do not have a pressure to just think of the expenses that you are going to pay, but you have to think also that these expenses should bear fruitful results. Right. So how helpful is our district council regarding this budgeting? Are they have an open hand? Okay, if you are going for this, we will give you this much. Go ahead. How helpful they are? our district council. So, so Gunjan, you I can share ahead. or anyone? Yes. Anyone can answer? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So that's very obvious if you are asking money for an event or uh, if you're asking for funding for any specific events, you should have a proper plan. Because right. without a proper plan or without uh, having a knowledge that we, just having a proper plan will not be enough. You need to have a plan. You need to how you will be executing it, and how will be you will be able to take follow-ups of the things that you had from the plan. Let's say consider a membership drive. So you plan for a membership drive. You conducted a membership drive. You got some leads. 
So how are you going to uh, follow up with those leads so that they convert into at least they attend meetings and they convert into members. So you have to have these proper plans and to have these proper plans when you require funds, there will be a lot of questions because mm. it, as I told us, it's hard on money. So that's very obvious that we have we might be bombarded with lots of questions that are to know whether we have enough plan or not. If we do not, then we are asked to reconsider our plan. Right, right. If we have a proper exactly. plan, then then we are not restricted to just that's uh, uh, yes, yes on the budget front. Exactly. So any uh, any point you would like to add, uh, Gunjan? Or yes. Uh, some... yes, I would like to add uh, one point here. Uh, whatever Ria said that, yes, it is important that you have a proper plan with you and uh, how to execute it. One more thing, when we are creating this plan and you have uh, all the you know points listed that how you're going to execute it. So the person who are sitting over there and mm -hmm. who are going to review this, they all have done it before. They are right. having that experience. So yes. they, based on that, they always provide you inputs. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. they think that it, it's going to work, it's going to, you know, that you're going to achieve these uh, uh, goals, then only they will approve it. And which is obvious. We all are That's here. So to, obvious, you know, right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so they provide their inputs and then we have to change it and they will always there to help us. Help us. So, exactly. Yes. So the district officers and I must say the district team is very, very helpful and supportive. Only you have to come forward and you have to, you know, uh, show that guts that we can do it. Do it. Exactly. The plans. The Yes, Sakshi, she has raised her hand. Yes. So I just wanted to add uh, a bottom line to what Ria and Chakna said. When you are proposing a plan for any membership drive or a PR event on any level that is above a club, that is either an area or a division level, you need to keep two things in mind. And this this is a versatile thing. Any division director, any district director, any club growth director will ask you this. How will it benefit the members? How will it benefit the district and Toastmasters International? Yes. So when you plan something, everybody, I guess, I, Sapna, Ria, Gunit, we, we came up with a lot of ideas. But the bottom line of every idea that we were being questioned is, how will it going to benefit? How are you so sure that, you know, these people will turn up? What if hmm. all your division has, you know, for example, let's say, let's say we have planned a marathon on Valentine's Day. The first question is, okay, tell me, Sakshi, how many people will turn up, turn up on Valentine's? And yes. do it over, over that, it's a Monday. So come on. Like, I cannot say no, no, people will come just because I have planned it. So you have to be very wise. When mm. if, if if one thing goes wrong, your plan will not be approved. As Sapna said, they are experienced; they know better than us. So convincing them is uh, this hard part. But if that's one done, you can be all proud and you can boast it that yes, I've done it. So it would yeah. be yes. That convincing that's them is uh, actually again a Herculean task, right? Everyone will agree. Yes, but I would say it's, you know, the, the tough they are, the better it is for us. Yes. Because we now, at times, people people do not cut us. Uh, they follow what we say because we are ADs. Actually, the real test come when we have to convince people who are better than us. So I, I would say, see, Sapna is also agreeing to this. So when it comes to budgeting and getting it approved by district, uh, you have to be very wise with your ideas. You have to be all uh, clear that this is it. This this will come up. This is the you know product of what we have done. If they don't say, if they don't see that any at any point we are putting more efforts and getting less result into it, uh, they'll not they'll not approve it. So to before getting to that point, I would say you have to work on your idea well. Yeah, bottom line is that. Yes, true. Very true. Uh, Gunjan, would, would you like, like to add one point here? Yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. It's just a point. <laughs> so, uh, like uh, Sakshi said, when they, when we have to convince them and when we have to negotiate with them, so it actually these are the challenges for us, and those challenges help us to improve further. So this, these are the also, you know, convincing people and also the negotiating as also come under the leadership skills, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
how to negotiate is one of the you know caliber you need to negotiate and yes. convince and all these things help us to develop that also right i agree yes gunjan would you like to add anything yes as uh, my co ad is riya sakshi and sapna said it very well so for our future leaders who are watching this uh, so to sum this up i would say in a very short way that uh, as sakshi said that you need a proper proper wise decision to be uh, it is a wise decision to be made so uh, try to be realistic when you are approaching with a plan try to be realistic with your goals try to be time bound with it and also achievable the goals should be very much achievable if these things are there in your plan and at the end it is beneficial to your members and toastmaster international then you are all sorted if these four check boxes are tick marked you are sorted you just need now as sapna said that they will be throwing questions at you because kuch points hote hai jo aap bhi nahi we we also learn while we approach people while we are convincing them that this is to be done so there are some points which we also miss out so that another learning that from their experience we get to know that yes this this is also needed to be added so there's right. a cherry on the top you can say uh, yeah. because touch wood in this term we have uh, we have got really good leaders who are helpful to us so we we also learn in that uh, whole process so if those check boxes are marked and if we are willing with open arms to accept all that all the challenges then everything will be i would say not a piece of cake but everything would be smooth right it will be hassle free exactly thank you gunjan for adding that too so now let's come to the uh, last question of this meeting now there are lots of awards and recognition for individual members club level and at area level also with so much data around how do you manage to meticulously track all the achievements ensuring that the individuals receive their award correctly this is again a big task for you all right to keep a track of all the awards and all that i don't think so because uh, when we have riya with us then uh, <laughs> we are not at all worried yes. about it she is the she's the human good at everything she is good at she is the human tracker for example <laughs> we'll forget that n3 has not done this this club from n2 has not done this but riya will come up with a tracker hello guys this this this, this, this <laughs> that's is that's a good idea <laughs> yes See, that's the good part about knowing each other. She is good yes. with tracking. Sapna is good with planning. Gunjan is good with PR, and I am the delegator of the team. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. That's a, a very so, good coordination among you four. So that that's how we do it. So when when we have a person who can track anything and everything, be it the Zoom calendar, be it the awards tracker. beads the beads the calendar that we have to follow throughout the year we have someone in our team who can do us and i guess sapna and gunjan can not agree more uh, we have learned the skill from her in the palaka totally totally yes, both of them are very good at this thing maintaining excel maintaining charts and doing it and yes. this, any of the co ads that we have uh, outside our division also have agreed to it they have been main, they have been maintaining it so nicely telling us each and every detail that yes it it's a point of learning and it's a life skill now working with excel yes yes it has become an important part yeah and that helps you to you know remember what is next what we have to do it in the next all that thing who has achieved what level tracker is very important we are also following in our club also the same thing because at least i have the habit of forgetting so keep a track to maintain an excel sheet i think that is the best idea to do that and in a group of you four all the ads having a person who keeps a track makes the task more easier for you three right yeah, totally so <laughs> yeah so anything you would like to add riya here so how do you do it actually i I personally, I I love Excel. I, I don't know why. You, you <laughs> just add a bit of color here and there. It shows so colorful. And when you have, 
at the end of the year, when you look at the action, it's, it's really so colorful. <laughs> colorful, <It's a> <laughs> exactly. If you add colors like green, blue, yellow, mm. then these are happy colors. So we will keep happier when you look at that. And yes. the thing is, tracking is all right. Okay, tracking is manageable. But the after tracking, when you go to the team and ask for a follow up, and if the team is not responding in a positive manner, that becomes more hectic. Yes. So credits to my team that they do not get irritated with the follow ups. <laughs> they are more than happy. Ki, All right, we'll get it done. Sometimes they may be uh, thankful to you, right? That you have reminded. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, Ria and Sakshi, like we all, uh, we all are from the different backgrounds, right? I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Kunjan is she the mandala artist. I'm from the IT background. Ria is lawyer, and Sakshi is also from engineering, but she's a student. And we all have, you know, different different qualities, which I can say. So this really help us, and we are not only uh, you know uh, taking it as a responsibility, but we are also enjoying it. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and this is more so, most important thing. Yes, you know, uh, if in a team you have such a person who will remind us or uh, is kind of a reminder, you walk freely. Okay, somebody is there to remind us. A less attention you walk with that. Uh, okay, anything anyone would like to add here? Gunjan, Sakshi. Okay, about so, keeping a track of this anything in your uh, area you do for track keeping a track of the achievements or the awards okay i would say that sakshi and sapna would totally agree with me on this point that we are totally like you said that you can walk freely someone is there to take care of it so we are like that that riya is there she'll remind us because <laughs> yes. she just love excel like that uh, that's like a playground for her playing for her with yes. excel yeah yes yes that's a game for her and she loves to do it so we also are very much uh, uh, we know that yes she is there so she'll remind us mm-hmm. and yes we need to take care that yes now the deadline is here now we need to approach it so that needs to be taken care of by us but yes we are totally uh, you can say relaxed in that matter that yes ria is keeping a track a division uh, is there a whole division tracker is made actually not just of one area but of all the areas and all the clubs of division n so that's a very big big excel sheet which is maintained by her so initially mm-hmm. we thought that how would she do it but now we know that she loves it so it's a very uh, like a piece of cake for her to do the these tasks to maintain yes. excel excel passionate about the yes. excel sheet yes. it's good to know that ria we are definitely we will approach you for that to learn more about actually excel sheet it has many things to to it actually we uh, only know how to add columns and rows and uh, feed the information but there are many things that there are in the excel sheet and we should know and hopefully in future we will connect to you ria for that too <laughs> i think we come to an end of this panel discussion we had a lovely time with you although we started a bit late but really uh, this was a kind of a interaction a very positive interaction with you all i had many things to learn from you people managing both professional and personal life uh, both uh, being a student being a lawyer lawyer being a wife as well as it professional and gunjan maintaining so uh, both the club as well as home front as well as her own passion doing mandela uh, art and all that in spite of that uh, helping out the club to move ahead to achieve the uh, non achievable things so i think you are doing the great job and i must congratulate you all again holding a big position in the area and lastly i would say empowerment to the women you have showed it you all four have shown that uh, really if the responsibility is given to the women they can do, go uh, where not no one can imagine where we can go ahead thank you so in summary i would say 
for uh, leadership you need commitment dedication passion for it and of course everything comes with experience and you have uh, mentors all around they help us in everything right true so thank you so much for coming to this panel discussion and hopefully in future also we'll have some other uh, discussions on another topic so thank you so much everyone thank, thank you shivani for having us yes yeah, sure hope we meet uh, we meet offline so that sure. uh, there will be more sure. face to face interaction yes definitely okay have a nice day